Hi guys, I'm really grateful to have the honor to speak with you today. I will be uh, presenting you uh, some uh, context and information regarding the way content provider deals with uh, the context of high HD, defini HD, defini uh, HD definition and HD quality and how to deal with multi-screens and how we did to cope with this issue. Um, LizWeb is a worldwide hosting provider and cloud provider based in the Netherlands, so we are uh, a neighbor here. And uh, I'm the CDN product manager. Um, what we'll be uh, presenting is just the challenges associated to uh, HD and multi-device, the available open source solution to deliver live and uh, VOD streams to multi-screen, and then what I'll propose to do very humbly is to propose my recommendation that we've been applying internally and we, we learned you know, the process. We came up with some best practice that I would like to share with you and maybe gather your comment about those best practices so that we can all learn together. And then I'll present you what we are uh, actually, uh, what we did with it. So uh, very simply, I think you are, you are familiar with this. Uh, there is and there are new online media challenges these days. On one side, on the left, there is a content explosion, user-generated content, live content, everyone willing to move towards the IP uh, video uh, world. And on the other side, there is a multiplicity of device. Now we are uh, coming up with a new uh, VR gear. It's true that uh, you can try them uh, on our stand on the other side to have a flight, a virtual flight. And in the middle, there is just the same internet, and that is best effort. And there are challenges associated to uh, the quality and the, the way the video can be delivered over the internet. And in addition to that, actually, there are attacks that are taking place. So the security issues are new uh, and uh, are doubling, I would say. And <laughs> in all this context, the demand of the end user is not changing. They just want to have a TV-like experience on their phone, on the VR, on the TV. They are actually not becoming more tolerant to error. They are becoming less tolerant to error. So on one side, the situation and the context is becoming much more complex. And the on the other side, we have the demand, the end users that are becoming more impatient and less tolerant to any error. There's no silver bullet, unfortunately. There is just a combination of solution, and that's what I would like to share with you. Just to have a little bit of context, uh, you have to realize that actually uh, the move is happening, you know? So the share of vertical screens, so uh, iPad, iPhone, uh, is growing, uh, and this is a, a, a trend that is not going to stop. So get ready get your content to be delivered on mobile, iPad, and other screens and TV screens, because their share is growing. Uh, lately, there is another trend that is added to this one. It's a 4K trend. And uh, you might think, you know, I'm, I don't have a 4K TV at home. Uh, maybe it's not urgent. Maybe it's a new buzz, but it's not happening. And actually, it's happening. 38% in 2018 of the TVs will be 4K TVs. And they will be smart TVs, and they will expect to see content in 4K. And this is an additional challenge that was not predicted, you know? I mean, I remember when we saw all these 3D TVs, and we thought, OK, everyone is going to have glasses, and then this trend fade away. I don't think the 4K trend is going to fade away. We see already cameras that are 8K, and uh, everyone is you know, renewing their TV, and the 4K trend is really a strong trend that uh, we have to adapt to. We cannot ignore it anymore. So if you are a content provider, what does it mean? So you are used to encode your videos with a typical 360p, 480p, 720p. That's OK. That's what everyone does. But if you want to move now to the high-definition world and the 4K world, 
So first, there is a 2K. You will see on, on YouTube there are quite a few 2K videos already. But if you want to go to high definition, 2K, and 4K, it's not just a small change. We are speaking of nine times more uncompressed video to store. If you compress it, it's actually three times more video on the encoded side. And then for the bit rate, you need to use seven times more bandwidth if you want to be able to propose all those bit rates. So this is a challenge. How are you going to deal with it? Are you going to do it in advance? Are you going to encode all the videos on all the format? And then every time there is a new format, you will re-encode all the videos with a new format. Are you going to do it on the fly? Are you going to you know, uh, adapt the different resolution, the different format? What do you do on the fly? What do you do in advance? These are the questions that you need to think. Where do you store them? And in Liz Web, you know, we are, we are a hosting company. So of course, we propose cloud solution. We propose storage solution. And we thought, OK, let's put ourselves in the in the shoes of our customers, and let's try to build this solution, and what are the challenges that, uh, that we have to solve. So on one side, you have the encoding part. The encoding part is just dumb CPU. You have a lot of CPU. You can do a lot of encoding. You don't have a lot of CPU. Well, you, you, are, you, know, you have to wait. If it's live video, when you can't wait. You have to have high-end encoder in order to encode the video fast enough so that they can be delivered live. So you have to encode right away, fast, and deliver those videos. So for on-demand encoding, you can wait, encode slowly, use small machines. But for live transcoding, well, you know, no choice. It's live. You have to get enough CPU to encode those videos right away. And if you want to do it for all those profiles that I described before, it's requiring a lot of CPU. Then you need to deliver those videos. So again, you know, we are speaking of 15 meg. Uh, so you need to find a solution. You know, I, I heard the interaction uh, solution. That's very interesting. W of course, as a CDN manager, I, I'm a big fan of CDN and this for many years. So it's about uh, replicating the content at the edge and being, you know, allowing the end user to connect to the CDN pop so that they can see those videos from, uh, or get those videos from a pop close by to them and get good quality. And then, actually, if you only do 4K, it's not enough. You need it as well to adapt to all the guys that don't have 4K, or maybe they have a 4K screen, but they don't have a 15 meg connection. They just have a, you know, two, three meg connection or eight meg connection. So they need to, you know, think of a, iPad Retina, do you send the Retina video, the HD video, or is his iPad connected with 2G or 3G? And then you actually, even though it's an iPad Retina, you need to send a low resolution video because his connection is not so good. So these are the questions you need to ask yourself. So concretely, this is uh, the less expensive to the more expensive path. If you want to go for the least expensive, you just select the browser that you want to target. You just do the encoding and the format for those browsers. Typically, the Dash is uh, most uh, the, the one that could reach most of the browsers, let's say it this way. But then, if you want to reach more, like you want to reach the iPhone as well, then you need to add Dash, you need to add HLS. And if you want to reach you know, Microsoft Silverlight players or uh, um, uh, uh, Flash players, then you need to add Microsoft Smooth Streaming format and then uh, HTTP Dynamic Streaming format so that you can you know, really you do all the format in order to reach all the device. So you can choose, OK, what we think is that if you only use now Dash and HLS, you will reach the vast majority of the device. And you don't need to use any more smooth streaming or HDS. So that would be our recommendation, like, the, like uh, the path of the middle, you know, not extreme in both ways. 
but what kind of tools are available on the market? Uh, as a hosting company, we are you know, always very uh, <laughs> cost uh, conscious, I would say, because we are, you know, it's, it's a cost-based service. So we tend to use open source services that are available on the market. So we would recommend Nginx to do the streaming, maybe a traffic server, Apache traffic server to deliver it. If you want to deliver RTMP, you can add the RTMP volume on Nginx. And for the encoding, we would recommend the use of FFmpeg. It's a very good tool. I would say it's a very good tool. Uh, it's you know open source uh, is great. It's free if your time is free as well. So you have to think about it. Uh, FFmpeg, so we can transcode in different bit rate as well as do the packaging. So now let's look at the process. So. You have your original video. Uh, it's uh, on the left. You will uh, transcode it with different resolution first. So maybe uh, I, I was detailing the seven, uh, six, seven resolution uh, number. So the low resolution, middle, high, very high. You do the transcoding. Then you do the transmuxing in order to adapt to the different format of delivery. So. Let's assume that we do only Dash and HLS. So you already have three files, two formats. Uh, so that's already uh, 12 uh, delivery methods that you have. You need to store those files, and then you need to stream those files. So in order to do the encoding, you can do FFmpeg. You do as well the, the format with FFmpeg. Then you store it. You can use a cloud storage. And then you deliver the stream with Nginx and the maybe RTMP module if you need. Or what we would recommend is stick to HTTP. RTMP is actually going to be um, uh, removed and not supported anymore in uh, most of the most commonly used browser in 2017, such as Chrome. And, uh, and then you can use, of course, a CDN to ensure that the quality is optimized on the end user side. Then the next question is, when do you do it? Do you do it before or do you do it on request? So you can do, you can do all this on request or in advance. So the transcoding in the three resolution, you can do it on request. The transmuxing as well. So you have all these decisions to estimate uh, the storage. Do you want to host it on your servers, or do you want to use a cloud? So it's a little bit like this. You, know? you have a studio, you have the instrument, you have all the tools. But then you have all this tuning to do. And this is, man, with open source, it's really this, you know? You can do everything you want, but you just need to have the time in order to do the little tuning for each video and for each format. So what we uh, did is choose a path. And so we uh, implemented this path, and we proposed it to the market. So of course, this is always our point of view. So we always, in the hosting business, what we try to do is look at the innovation that are done on the market and try to come on this market a little bit later when the solutions are a little bit commoditized and come with really a, a, a cost-efficient solution. So here are typically the recommendations. So provide five to seven bandwidth combination. It's usually enough. Transcode in advance for live, get ready. You need to really have enough CPU in order to transcode in live your content. The transmuxing could be done on the fly. We would recommend that. Keep and restrain yourself to just use HLS and Dash. Simplify complex content. Uh, Typically, you can use Flash-based HLS player for non-Apple browser. And simplify complex workflow. Use Nginx. Don't 
uh, insist on using Adobe or HTTP server combination and, and a complex story when engineers can do it. And we would recommend a cloud infrastructure. Of course, the cloud has many benefits. They are listed here. <coughs> I mean, if you want more information on cloud, I'll be glad to uh, provide you with uh, all the information you need. Uh, we launch a new live transcoding service now. It's based on private cloud, so we use our own cloud to build this service. We provide it actually for free, so we really cut costs. So we provide live transcoding service, five profiles for free, integrated in our CDN service for 49 euros per month. So that's how low and how competitive we can be uh, on this market. And uh, what you get is basically a, you know, a simplified process. So we try to say, well, if you want, you can do it yourself. You can set up a source, set up the server, set up the transcoding. Or if you want, you can use our platform, transcoding as a service. And we selected already uh, 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 templates that you can easily select and use those profiles to transcode your, uh, your, uh, your video. CDN is integrated with our transcoding services. This is a map of our POPs, so we are covering most geographies in the US, in Europe, and in Asia. And uh, what we did, I wanted an example, this is uh, DJ Hardwell. So we actually did a live stream with virtual reality where we filmed with a 360 video a concert in Miami of DJ Hardwell, and we distributed all around the world. We had more than 5,000 viewers all night uh, watching the, the video. That was really cool. And this is the future. I think 4K is clear it's going to stay. Virtual reality, well, maybe we can speak in a few years to see if it's still there or not. But it looks like being a strong, uh, strong trend. And we are able to do transcoding for it. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's about it. I mean, uh, just uh, remember, uh, of course, we have a CDN service based on three pillar, large for video, small for web acceleration, and cybersecurity as well for securing those streams. <laughs>